Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today what we're talking about is SERs, the little guys that help you control the elements in your boil kettles. So if you have been wondering where to get these controllers from, how to use them, how to set them up and those sorts of things, you're in the right place. Oh, and by the way, while we're doing it, we're going to be running the Birdwatchers stripping runs too. Welcome to Stiller everyone, this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Basically what that means is we talk about all sorts of distilling stuff like the SCR controllers or making certain recipes like the bird watches. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, if you're into craft spirits, if you're into making them or learning about how to make them, this might be the channel for you and if it is, you should totally hit the subscribe button down below and we'll catch you next time as well. Like I said, we will be running the stripping runs for the bird watches. I've actually done one already and I need to do probably two more. If you're not sure what bird watches is, basically it's a tomato paste wash used to make uh, a neutral spirit, I guess. So you can call it vodka if you want. Personally, I'm making it so I can get onto making some gin. Pretty excited about that. So if you'd like to see the recipe before that wash, I will put a card up top that you can check out and you can go do that now. So I want to get into talking about SCRs, but I'm thinking, uh, you know what, let's get this bird watches happening first and I can talk to you while that's happening. I guess we could slow mow it. Should we slow mow it? We haven't slow mowed in a while. Let's slow mow it. So someone told me to try that, and you're right dude, it does taste uh, very interesting, but funnily enough, I get almost no tomato paste out of it whatsoever, I can't really detect it. Uh, it tastes like water, a little bit of yeast, and alcohol essentially to me, that's about it. Anyway guys, enough of that, as you can probably hear, we are almost ready for the still to start dripping, and that means it's time for me to start talking about SCRs. So first things first guys, and that is, like always, safety. If you are setting these things up, if you're wiring them, if you're adjusting them, if you're doing anything like that with them, you are playing with the big boys' voltage. This is not 5 or 12 volts stuff. If you mess up, it is guaranteed to hurt, and you've got a pretty good chance of it being a little bit worse than that as well. So here's the thing, I am not an electrician. I am not here to give you every little safety tip that you can get, because... I may not know them all. I admit that I don't know it all and I want you to know that before we get into this. Make sure you do your research properly and make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to play with these things. Which leads to the next point. I thoroughly, thoroughly believe in having a backup and uh, giving yourself second chances whenever you can. Uh, and for that reason I would suggest having, at the very least, something like this. This little guy is an RCD or a residual, residual current residual current doohickey it's a it's a residual current device and essentially what it does is it monitors the current uh, running through the active and the neutral wires decides whether or not those are equal are the same uh, and if they're not it'll shut the power off basically so is it going to stop you from getting shocked nope it's still going to hurt probably but it'll give you a much better chance of not dying and in my books not dying is a good thing of course you can use like the full blown um, spa panel things that a lot of the guys in the US seem to use. Totally cool as well, but at the very least make sure you've got something giving yourself a bit of backup guys. I know that I should probably upgrade at some point in time, but right now these are doing me good. If you're not sure what you're looking at and you're not sure where to get them from, I will stick a link for Amazon down in the comments. Alright team, with all of that being said, let's get into it. So why would you use an SCR in the first place? Essentially what it allows you to do is adjust the amount of energy you're putting into your elements. So essentially how hard, how fast are you heating the liquid in your boiler is what it comes down to. Why do we want to do that? Well if you're running a pot still, it lets you sort of dial in I guess the precision of the distillation that you're running. If you're running a reflux column or something like that, it essentially allows you to dial in I guess vapor speed. Which as you know is a very important part 
uh, of the art of distillation. So having a specific control over the amount of energy you're putting into your boiler is quite important. So then I guess the question is why use an SCR instead of a PID or anything else? I guess the answer to that is basically they're simple, they're cheap, and they get the job done. Using a PID or something else like that is totally an option, but make sure to do some research on it because there is definitely a few traps with those things. But at the end of the day, an SCR is always going to be easy to get and always going to be cheaper than a PID if you're kind of comparing apples with apples. It's a simple and in this case a quite an elegant solution that will give you 90% of the functionality that you could have with anything else. So really at the beginning of the day it is an awesome option for beginners and people that want to test the waters with this sort of thing. Or people that just don't want bells and whistles, they just want to get the job done and do things manually and you know hands on by themselves. Which you really have to say there's an argument that that's the best way to do things in a craft like this. So what I'm saying is sure if you want to use a PID or something like that do it, do your research, but you can do it. But using an SCR is totally an easy, cheap way to control the elements in an electrical boil kettle. So if these things are so good, where do you get them from? Turns out we're actually pretty lucky here, guys. The, uh, the boom in insanely cheap electronics coming out of China is going to totally hook you up here pretty much no matter where you're going to buy the thing from. These things are dirt cheap now, dirt cheap. I mean, if you want to go out and buy... A, uh, a good one from a reputable source, something like Amazon or whatever, you're looking at paying $20, $25. Uh, if you want to get one cheap, dirt cheap, you can get them for like four bucks off AliExpress or something. But the point is you've got a whole lot of options here, team. A few tips when you're looking at buying these things. First of all, first of all, I would suggest buying with a little bit of overkill. So if you've got a system set up with a two kilowatt element, uh, buy a PID that says that it will handle four kilowatts at the very least i would suggest probably going for like 10 kilowatts do you get what i'm saying Overbuy, buy something that is way overrated because let's face it when things are that cheap and that mass produced uh, there is a whole lot of variance on the production and the chances of it you know living up to the standards that it advertises are so so second of all you probably want to treat them as a semi-consumable item uh, my point being is at some point in time it will fail it's just going to happen if you use it long enough so i guess you can come at this in a couple of different ways one is to buy the cheaper units uh, and when you buy one buy two assuming that one will fail if one does fail it takes you five ten minutes to get the second one wired up and you're away laughing again you can order another one it's going to take you 30 days to get there from aliexpress or whatever but you are not going to be left with a still that you can't run because that $8 part failed on you. Second of all, you can kind of do the same thing, but go for more expensive parts uh, from more reputable dealers that are more likely to have better quality control and assume that you're going to get a little bit more mileage out of it. At some point in time, like I said, the thing will fail though. But hell, so will everything else. Your, your elements are going to fail at some point in time too. So it is what it is, guys. First of all, have a look on AliExpress and see what you can find, guys. Like I said, you're probably going to find something for sort of $8 us that is going to be relatively good uh, if you do i'd suggest buying a couple of them and just sort of seeing how they go uh, second of all you can buy it from your local homebrew store or amazon or something like that it'll be a little bit more expensive but you would hope that the parts would be a little bit better uh, in saying that you know where those parts come from right once again team i will stick a link down below to a slightly higher quality i guess version on amazon and the reason i'm linking this one it has four and ten kilowatt versions and versions for both in 110 and 220 volt currents did i say that right i don't know i think i think you know what i mean though <laughs> okay guys so so i almost don't want to show you this and i almost want to fake it because you are going to <laughs> You're totally going to think that this is set up uh, and that I'm full of basically uh, but it's not I promise you and I'm not entirely sure what to do right now because I just uh, turned the SCR on and I uh, had a little play the idea was to uh, show you an SCR in operation and show how easy it is to use uh, but it kind of stopped working <laughs> let me show you <laughs> yeah totally blown out <laughs> The funny thing is, I didn't follow my own advice. I don't have a second one ready to go. Lucky it's a stripping run and I can go through without it. 
<laughs> so honestly, I'm not entirely sure where we're going to go with this video now, but um, let's bumble through, I guess. First of all, I guess we'll detach this thing from that uh, plate that it's on and I can give you a rough idea of how to wire the things up. All right, team, so these things really are very simple to wire up, but just a quick word of caution, they have at the very least the potential or even the likelihood to be totally different between one SCR and the next. Even if your one looks almost identical to this, there is a really high chance that the layout uh, on the circuit is totally different. So make sure you check the diagram that came with your specific SCR. In saying that, this is how my one is set up. On this side is the in from the wall, the mains uh, with the positive and the negative. And then on this side is the out with the positive and the negative again, running out to the element itself. The neutrals are uh, just twisted together over here as well I really should have soldered those but um, it is what it is I have had electric tape covering that and I just taken it all off I stripped everything back to see what was going on um, before I turned the camera on when I realized it wasn't working as you can see if you couldn't see before this is uh, totally blowing here and it looks like there's been a fair bit of heat underneath the heatsink so this specific SCR I have been using for a year now I haven't given it that much of a hard life would a more expensive one lasted longer because that was definitely an El Cheapo um, maybe I, I who knows just don't know in any case I definitely need to get onto this I need to get an SC uh, bought and I need to get one before I'm able to do the reflux for the bird watchers hmm problem if only I followed my own advice huh <laughs> Another really common question is how do you run two elements with these things? Do you need two setups? Um, what's the best way to do it? You could run two of these, but I think that's kind of overkill. And I guess it depends on your setup and how your still works. This is the way I like to think about it. When you are controlling the power to the elements in your boiler, I think of it in percentage of total power. So do I want 100%, do I want 50%, do I want 25%, 75%, you, you get the idea, right? And the reason that I find it easier to think in that way is that they're just round numbers, the math's easier, rather than trying to convert it to kilowatts or, or whatever. So I only use one SCR for two elements. So here's how I do it. One element is simply on or off. So that gives me 0% or 50%, whether it's on or off. On the other side, I have my element hooked up to the SCR, which gives me a gradient of anywhere between, roughly speaking, 0 and 50%. So if I want 100% power, I can just turn this on full blast and turn this on as well, which gives me 100%. Now if I want anything below 50%, this one can just be turned off, and this one can be set to the percentage I want. So if I want 30%, for example, this is off, and this is set to 30%. If I want anything over 50%, then this one gets turned on, and then I adjust with this one. So if I want 75%, 50%, plus 25 is 70%. Yeah, you guys have got it. I don't need to go over that anymore. <laughs> but it is really, really surprising how often that question gets asked. And I asked the same question when I was getting set up. I didn't think of the fact that it's easy to work like that. There is one more thing that I think you should probably consider when setting up an SCR, and that is how you're gonna house it and where you're going to mount it or put it when you're in operation. And the reason for that, obviously, is that we are dealing with a whole lot of liquids, uh, and liquid and electricity don't mix so well. A lot of people will build inside containers that are um, maybe not waterproof, but, you know, water resistant or splash resistant at the very least. Uh, I'm all for that as well. But I decided to go the route of essentially trying to get it up above everything, and I failed on that a little bit because the SCR was sitting here with this plate on top of it and the SCR was mounted through it so the little uh, knob was coming through this side of the plate. Anyway guys I'm hoping that if you've got questions regarding SCRs or how to control an electric boiler I hope this helped you out a whole lot. If you have some more questions feel free to drop them down below. If you're interested in following along with the bird watches the plan is to be able to do the reflux run next weekend so that'll be the next video you see after this. Um, problem is that now I don't have an SCR. Maybe it's time to go see J-Car. <laughs> but anyway, I'll get something sorted out for you guys. Oh, I almost forgot to thank my Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I really do mean that. I do want to get things a little bit more organized over on Patreon. Um, but to be honest, I think I'm going to have to leave that for now until after the twins are born. And I'll get onto that, I promise you. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you really liked it, make sure you're subscribed. And you've got the notification bell highlighted as well. 
and I will see you next time, guys. See ya!